in today's video. Hi guys, welcome to this week's video. Before we start, make sure to subscribe if you are not and give a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. September 2018, Southeast Asia region was hit by one of the strongest typhoons on record. Typhoon Mankut made, made landfall near Macau on the 15th and 16th September. A storm surge of up to 1.9 meters affected Macau. 40 people were injured and for the first time in history all casinos were closed. Total damage was estimated to be 215.3 million US dollars. On the 17th September, Macau's first and only entomologist, Dr. Danny Leung, sent me a message asking if I would like to go anting in one of Macau's hills. On our way up to the hill, we were already finding so many broken branches, many with small colonies inside. But our main goal was the heart of the forest patch and not the border. Soon after, we arrived at our destination. Oh, so after the typhoon, so many canopy ants and algebra will fall down. So, we are looking for different species in this town. So, Good luck, let's go. Good luck, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so, be careful that you like something. So, go inside the forest to find the fall down the tree, fall, fall down this tree and go to collect the, the top part of the animal at inside at the top. Big tree with Martin and Benny. And X, Y, V. Yeah, like that. As the tree for that, we can take a look. No, oh, ants, different species. Like that. So we call, because in the normal time we cannot uh, observe this part. As the tree fall down, we can observe this part. So keep, keep going down. We also found a huge wasp nest from the species Vespa affinis that had been knocked down by the strong winds. Unfortunately for the wasps, their whole nest got raided by Carabara diversa, as you can see. As we moved along, then he started laying some baits on the trees to be able to survey the types of species that would appear and which type of bait they would be more interested in. As we were coming out of the forest, we found some big branches that had been saw cut and piled up by the forest management team. Upon closer inspection, we found a small Campanotis colony. Then he took out some samples of his own and I got to keep the whole twig for myself. I didn't know if there was a queen inside or not, but I decided to try nonetheless. Here are the first photos and videos of the colony. So I'm delighted to present to you the arboreal carpenter and species of Campanotis lighty. This species can be found exclusively in Taiwan and the Chinese regions of Guangdong, Hunan, Fujian in the south and Jiangsu further up north. They belong to the Formicinae subfamily, the Campanotis genus, also known as Carpenterans, and the Myrmambles subgenus. They are considered a medium to small species. The total length of majors does not exceed 7 mm. Most species of the Old World subgenus Myrmambles live in the forest edge or in secondary forests. The species inside Myrmambles subgenus are commonly called the Eastern False Cork Head Ants and are similar to some other subgenera of Campanotis and especially to Colobopsis genus, and all of which show a morphological trend toward phragmosis. Phragmosis means any method by which an animal defends itself in its burrow by using its own body as a barrier. 
Phragmosis is shown in these ends in the form of partial or complete truncation of the interior end of the head. In plain English, they look like cork head ends, behave like cork head ends, but simply don't have such pronounced truncated heads in their queen and soldier casts, hence the name false. This species presents an accentuated worker dimorphism, with distinctive minor and soldier casts. Observations suggest that this species gathers honeydew as energy source and sucks insect body fluids as protein source as well as solid food. Minor and majors are observed returning to the nest with distended gusters, but inside the nest only majors seem to continue to be in replete state. As I told you before, this year we were going to have the Macau Science Center Biodiversity Exhibition, which was scheduled to start in April, but due to the latest coronavirus outbreak, all social and cultural gathering events have been cancelled or postponed. Nonetheless, Danny and I got together and defined what the end display would look like and what it would contain. For the main concept, we wanted to have a ground-dwelling leaf litter ant species together with an arboreal ant species. So we chose Odonta panera denticulata and our lovely Campanotus lighti. For the Campanotus lighti nest, I knew exactly who to call, for I had been following on Instagram an European keeper who started doing these awesome wood ant nests. His name is Thomas, and the account is Forento Wood Nests. Quick disclaimer, I am not doing any publicity or have any kickback from this, I am just giving credit where credit is deserved. So I called Thomas and placed an order for two wood nests, one of which would be used for the exhibition. I personally love it, and I hope all future exhibition visitors will love it too, as I think it gives an awesome inside look to what a realistic arboreal ant nest would look like from the inside. I thought it would be interesting to talk more about arboreal ants, their evolution, and overall ecology. Arboreal ants are ant species that nest on trees and tree branches and use above ground vegetation as primary foraging substrates through a variety of surfaces, including bark, moss, lichens, stems, and leaves. Arboreal ants can be found mostly in tropical and subtropical areas because, in the case of temperate regions, the drastic changes in temperature in the habitat, as a consequence of strong seasonal climate, make it almost impossible for ants to inhabit such strata. There are a few theories as to how ants got to occupy the tree canopies. The most prominent is the dynastic succession hypothesis from Drs. Wilson and Hall Dobler, which introduces the idea that ants arose in the leaf litter of tropical angiosperm forests and then spread to other strata, including the soil. Another hypothesis is the out-of-the-ground hypothesis, in which ants initially arose in the soil and only later made transitions into the leaf litter and other upper strata. Whatever the actual one may be, it is generally considered that arboreal life was acquired secondarily, and the story of the rise of ants is one that began in the early Cretaceous period. 139 to 158 million years ago, with ants emerging on the surface of the planet. Once on the surface, most of the diversification of the modern genera took place, and many lineages subsequently transitioned to the different strata and biomes. Among the four major subfamilies, Pondrinae, Myrmicinae, Formicinae, and Dolicodirinae, the Pondrinae appeared first. They were ground-dwelling, occupying the leaf litter of forests, and as arthropod predators, they flourished throughout the world. The Myrmicinae appeared second. They were able to evolve by first occupying ground and leaf litter sites and successfully competing with the Pondrinae. And so it seems, at least partially, they prevented the Formicinae and Olicodrinae, which appeared later, from taking over those sites. And so, left with fewer options, most Formicinae and Olicodrinae species went up towards the canopy, probably becoming the first arboreal land species. One interesting comparison between leaf litter and arboreal ants is that litter ants use stings and mandibles to defend their captured prey from being stolen by other ants, mechanisms requiring close contact to be effective, while arboreal ants primarily use chemical defenses, which act at a larger spatial scale. Ranking of ant genera surveyed in several tropical forests is as follows. Campanotis, Polyrhachis, Crematogaster, Fadoli, Tetramorium, Technomyrmex, Tetraponera, and Dolicoderas. Arboreal ants are characterized by slender and streamlined bodies, extremely populous colonies, the ability to build large or polydomous nests, either in carton, weaved, or simply nesting inside the wood, and a highly developed territoriality and defense mechanism. Since the canopy is discontinuous, arboreal foraging ants can be found in a mosaic pattern. 
The concept of canopy and mosaic refers to the three-dimensional mosaic within a habitat that is created by the overlapping territories of dominant arboreal ants. In the tropical forest canopy, worker ants must cling to and run along diverse vegetative surfaces with little protection from the sun, wind and rain. Ants rely in part on their tiny adhesive tarsal pads to maintain sufficient contact with substrates to prevent falls under these varied conditions. In addition to the challenges posed by clinging, walking and running, the adhesive system of a tropical arboreal ant must function effectively in diverse environmental conditions. This remarkable ecological success reflects the adaptation of arboreal ant species to this particular three-dimensional environment, as opposed to the bidimensional environment of ground-dwelling ants. Among the main constraints of this environment, we can note the limited number of nest sites and food resources, climatic factors, and the fact that the rainforest canopies are rather dry when compared to the ground. Arboreal ant species are generalist omnivore feeders, which use every food item available. They have become extremely good predators either individually or in groups, ambushing flying insects on their host tree foliage as well as collecting the occasional dead insect. In tropical forests, the main carbohydrate resources for ants are honeydew, tree sap and extrafloral nectar, which are more abundant in the canopy than on the ground. Well guys, there was a lot more to talk about regarding arboreal ants, but I will wrap the video right here and just recommend that you go check other channel's awesome videos. The first video from Ants Australia, Weaver Ants, The Guardians of the Canopy by Jordan Dean, and the second from The Ant Network, The Mysteries in Madagascar, with Miles Maxer, Explorations of the Forest Canopy. In case you have missed them, please click the link on the description below. I hope you have enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching, and see you on the next week. Bye!